would never get here. You got to understand this show started organically. Never been about numbers to me. Kenny Sway, what's good? Those my guests, the living legend, the one and only. Your old stuff. What's up, Joe? What's up, baby? Yo, yeah. what's going on, baby? Yo, I don't know my phone. The weather's messed up in New York. I, know, I don't know my good. phone. Is, it's bugging out, but let's 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 get through this. Let's yo, do it. yo, oh, you got the book out. What's yes. the name of the book, Oster? There you go, right there, Joe. The, the last, last, the last enforcer, and you the last gangster. So that's why we all here together. <laughs> hey, what a combination. Oakley, let me tell you something. Oh, I had a couple. I want to tell you, I had a couple of basketball players who's the real deal who told me they came across you in the past, whether they played with you in Toronto or here and there. And you always told them, Fat Joe, the real one in New York. No you, doubt, baby. That's an honor, though, Oak, because Yo. you know you're the realest one in the, in, in the basketball. I appreciate court. it. But but when I used to see you out in front of the guard, I'm in the Bronx and PC, three or four o'clock in the morning, hanging out, seeing you moving around, doing the terror squad. I mean, it's just real. Yeah, it was real. It was real as fuck. Let me ask you something. After all these years, oh, why you write the book now? Why now? I mean, you know, it's uh, it's a different space. It's a different time in life. I've been doing podcasts. Interact with different people about the eighties and nineties, and what I seen back in the days. And my growing up, you know, my grandfather inspired me. To, you know, a lot of my toughness I get from him. But in the, when I get to New York, how the city embraced me, all this and that. I'm just trying to show the people what they think about me as a real guy, a real shooter. And uh, everything I'm be talking about right now is in this book. And just keep it. Let me tell you something, Mo. Uh, I, I could imagine what this book is about. Uh, he got froze on us, huh? He good now. Um, yeah, but he's frozen here. Yo, oh, um, I could, he's frozen still. Yeah, they ain't trying to let us get. Am I frozen too? No. They ain't trying to let us get this thing off of Oakster. Let me try to. Let, let, let's see if we come back on. Yeah, so, you know, that's Charles Oakland, Living Legend, somebody I look up to, uh, just wrote a book. It's called The Last Enforcer. If you know anything about Charles Oakley, he has always been the heart and soul, not just of the New York Knicks, but of the Chicago Bulls before MJ won a chip. And always, Oakley was the hitter the right hand man, the guy who hold it down. And so, uh, there you go. The Oaks are coming on. Shout out to Cash App, our partner. Type in the words, Fat Joe, you get that 15 free dollars. It's much more than just sending money. It's crypto, it's stocks. It's a lot of things going on. Oh, boy said we went to college together. Yeah, right. I requested the Oakster. <laughs> it, it, it said no. It said, hold on. Man, this is a shitty day, man. These motherfuckers trying to stop greatness. But like I tell you all the time, if I gave up every time somebody acted crazy with me, I would never be here. <laughs> Shout out to Wild Cherry. Yeah, Dutch. I'm back, Joe. I'm back. The Oak, they ain't going to stop us. I guess what the if... intro was so tough, man. They, they, they tried to cut us off, but. No, nah, yeah, yeah. Oh, let me tell you something. If we gave up every time somebody tried us, we wouldn't be here. No doubt. We have to keep fighting. So, you know that. Oh, where did you grow up at? I uh, grew up, I was born and raised in Cleveland and back and forth from Alabama and Cleveland. So yes. I'm uh up in Ohio. You know, LeBron they call it the land now. They call it the land, but back the in LeBron the day. LeBron changed the landscaping. I'm going to the I'm going to the land for all star weekend. No, you're not, Joe. You gonna yes, be there? You guys, hey, that's hey. It's just like touching out New York. Hey, that's my. Hey, I'm from Cleveland, so you gotta get in touch with me. 
One yeah, million percent. Right. Oh, you if know, I see, see you. If you come there, it won't be right. Yo, Oakley, I see you every year in uh, the Jordan parties. Yeah, he so kept no. going to have one there. That's our family. You know what I'm saying? That's my Yo, man. MJ, tell me about being MJ's right-hand man in Chicago. Uh, and about all that, and then you getting traded. Do you think it would have been different when they went up against the Pistons if you was there on the Bulls? Um, I was there early, but I wasn't there later when they when they broke through. It definitely would have been different. They would have been trying all them different stunts because they know they would have had to pay. Uh, but, you know, they got through it, and uh, that's my man. But uh, we fell in, in New York. Hey, we couldn't get past them, but uh, we always a fight. We played them, but some type of way, we always felt short. But, uh, I mean, hey. It was a blessing Yo, that New York. If I would never came to New York, I would never met you, though. Oh, that's a fact, man. And we love you and we worship you, bro. You know that. You know, I always bug out when I go to Miami because, you know, I live in Miami. And right. whenever I go to the games and I see Pat Riley, I just be like, damn, yo, they stole him from the Knicks. Like, yeah. they, I mean, what was that like when Pat went down to Miami and they were the arch rivals? Right. Well, you know. Money to make anybody change sometimes, but uh, real people stay together. I mean, he wanted he wanted more because he had a he had a pedigree because what he done in L.A. He won a lot of championship with Magic. I know we fell short, but uh, he had value and, and like Crystal like Crystal Stock right now. He went to Miami. He bet it on himself. He got position on the team, president, and they won three championships mm -hmm. since he been there. So I can't hate on him. I, I every time is, they win, I be like, damn, that's our chip. I swear to God. Every time yeah, they win. Yeah, but he I, took us there. He got us there. But as a team, we didn't produce at the end. But uh, we can't say we didn't get there with him. You got to give him his pride what he done in Miami. Uh, you know, life go on. I mean, we can't cry. Okay, that, that infamous, infamous shot of Pat with the finger roll, shit rolling in and out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We had we hey like I said we had our chance to get a ring. That's one thing. I'm I'm sorry to New York fans and people around the tri-state that ten years in New York we should have had a ring. We was right there, but we didn't fit. We couldn't fit it. We never got the big call. Never made the big play for the offensive. And to beat the champion, you got to knock him out. That's how it was back in the old day with heavyweight fighters. Today's game has changed. It's a different system now, but uh. Uh, we fought every game. That's all I can say. Man, let me tell you the last enforcer. Ain't nobody dizzy. Ain't nobody been under a rock. Everybody loved Oakley because uh, what we would call it, a blue collar, a blue collar player. You Anything under the ring is yours. You boxing out, you rebound, you right. putting your body on the line. You doing whatever you got to do to make your team win. Right. Uh, let me ask you a question. Besides you, who's your top five enforcers, players of all time that you watched? Uh, overall or just right now? Overall, not right now. Right now, I, okay. I think right now Draymond Green would be. Uh, yeah, Draymond Green. But my thing is, back in the day, I'm going with who I know. Uh, I'm going with myself, Anthony Mason. Yeah. I like for at the point guard, I'm going with Derek Hopper. I got to get a center. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm giving Shaq a little credit because he was a big uh, <laughs> Um And the two guard, I mean, man. That, uh, I'm looking for a two-way guy. I mean, you got to go with the GOAT, you know, Michael Jordan. So that's my top five back in the days. But my, th my thing is, with basketball, it's all about IQ and what you do with your teammates, how you make them better, and how consistent you be when you're playing with them. You know, and I'm not an NBA. I used to coach at the Rucker, and I had guys. Hey, I saw, hey Joe, you know I saw you up in the Rucker many times. I know, I know, but I, mean, <laughs> I had guys that were so talented, but yeah. they were so dumb. They wouldn't yeah. get out the way. Like, and so that's why I big up my guy Kareem Reed because he had the IQ to slow it up yeah. and be like, all right, we got to win this shit. Anybody else to get caught up in the moment? Yeah, very, it, very smart. The game but, of basketball. See, very Joe, smart. 
what you said about IQ is that's why people ask me, can I play in today's day game? Like I play, I said, I can play anywhere. I understand. I know I'm a role player. I'm not a selfish player. I don't mind not taking no shots. As long as I, as long as I get a win, that's what matters. Defense, rebound, take a charge to die for loose balls. My thing is, that's sacrifice. That's like scoring 20 points to me, as long as I win. But some guys don't want to accept their role. And that's what go, that's what's wrong with the game today. Everybody feel like they got to be on social media. They got to be the one. They got to do this and that. And that's what, that's what really hurts the team because they cannot come together no more because no leadership, no structure. Yeah, we 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 know all about it. <laughs> we know all about it, Nick fans, man. We need we need yeah. leaders, man. It's like, uh, and, and what you're saying is that that's with everything, man. I went to the dentist today. I, shout out my dentist, Doctor Fadgen. But as soon as I get off the chair, it's like, Joe, let's shoot this video. Uh, everywhere we've been, right? Yeah. If we went to eat, the fucking the, the restaurant guys like, Joe, can we take the video? The bit like. It's like so much of like it feels like if you're not on time with the social media, right? You're missing something. I mean, my yeah. fucking dentist. Like when you go, right. and I love her. She's family. Like right. I love her to death. Right. But I mean, like there is nowhere you go that the social media factor is not involved in it. All the shit y'all used to do back in the days that we heard, you wouldn't have got away with that shit. Twenty twenty two. Well, my. My thing is, I think what you're saying is right, but people got to realize that everybody, social media made everybody want to be a superstar. That's why people can't grow no more, because everybody's jealous, everybody want to be on top. It's a role for everybody. You got to you, you gotta understand your strength and weakness. If you don't never understand that, you ain't going to never survive in this world. And the guy right behind you, and I know that's your big brother, <laughs> how y'all was hanging and banging. But y'all understand, though. You know what I'm saying? Me and him, me and him was like Ann Mason and you. That's why I was going to say. Ann Mason, I love Anthony Mason. There you go. That's my man. Uh, so much. Uh, Ann Mason, what's your fondest memory and where you was at when you heard he passed away? Uh, I mean, I was. I just had left him in New York. Matter of fact, I was going back to Cleveland two days later. I know they said, like, I couldn't believe it. And, uh, I know he was, you know, doing a lot of stuff in the city, working back and forth, you know, working out. And I couldn't believe it because they said, we passed. And I, like, what happened? You know, I know that he'd be out a lot, isn't that? I'm just glad it wasn't like something over the top because I would have to come up with it and find out what really happened because that was my man. When your man, something happened over the top, you got to find out. But when they told me he had a heart attack, and nothing I can do about that, but uh, try to help his family, his mom, his son, you know, his girlfriend. And the best way I could, and uh, I, I think I did that. A lot of teammates came through, but then his mother passed. You know, like uh, eight eight months to a year later, I was right there. I was I was kind of surprised more people didn't come out and, and support his mother because she was a big part of our team. Because she she didn't miss a game, no matter where we was at, she was there. And I tried to make sure that I was there every step away because I know he would have did it for me. You know, just like the stuff happened in the garden. If he would have been there, we would still be fighting to this day because I know what he's standing for. That's my man. Let me, let me ask you something. Pat Ewing, what, what's, what's, what's your relationship with Pat Ewing? Uh, my next. relationship with Pat Ewing, I mean, we win the war, this and that. Um, it should be better because I played with him for 10 years in, the, you know, in New York, in the Garden. Fans seen that, how hard I played. They had everybody back. When I came to the situation, they needed him. He didn't come down. He didn't come and represent me like he should have. And I know that Mason, if he said he would have. But, you know, life go on. But, you know, I, I don't wish bad luck to no one. But he know he have not been fair to me. I was fair with him. So hopefully that he realized that, you know, when somebody really go out his way every game, every night, I sacrifice my game, take it. From 15 shots to seven shots to make sure he was okay. So mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I hope that you know he realized that you know in life that we all make mistakes. But think about well, you, you know the one thing is we don't know. You know, life is too short. Yeah, we don't know where it's going. So it's it's time. I love the way you answered that. It's time that the big fella reach out to you and make good with it because 
you know, you guys got too much history. Yeah, no doubt. And 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 and, and judging your character, if I if I gotta judge you, you and MJ started out together. Y'all still brothers to this day. Oh yeah. Every time I see MJ, I see you. Yeah, but but that's what we stand for. Fatjo, and when you look at the book, before you open the book up, what do it say? MJ did the forward. If I would have Pastor to do the forward, he would never did it. He ain't that type of guy. I swear to God, my mom, he, he would have told me no. MJ didn't even ask me for a copy of the book. He said yes. And you know, that's my man. I, I he love you. I, 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 like I, said, he I love you all. Really for that guy. That guy did so much for me, made me a better guy, made me an understanding guy about life. And uh, in Chicago, when we were on the street together, hung out, the city of Chicago put us on, you know, he put that city on his back. I come to New York. I thought Pat was gonna put the seat on his back, but it's a different breed. Not, you know, trying, trying to throw him on the bus or nothing. But that's just some people just don't have it. He don't have that it. MJ was that it. It's a big difference. Yeah, some people just don't have it. I mean, Pat, he went out we he went all out as a player. You know what I'm saying? He just ain't do he ain't get the final job done. Uh and so I you know, every time I think about Jeff Van Gundy, I see him grabbing the players on right. <laughs> grabbing the players. Do you talk about that in this book? Uh not really. But the contents are so strong in this book. I just talk about a lot of stuff, a lot of good stories, a lot of stuff in the NBA, a lot of, you know, Dennis Rodman, Tyrone Hill, uh, you know, Lil Shaq, Barkley. But my thing is, people are always want what about the eighties and nine? I'm giving them what they want. Like the OJ said the song, give the people what they want. Because people are like, why are you talking about 89 is now? That's what they want to hear. Well, the next book will be about the 2000. But right now, I'm trying to give you all the contents about how it was, the music, the people. The, I mean, everybody got along. I mean, so. Tell me what. Tell stuff. me what. Because I heard legendary. I mean, legendary stories, multiple legendary stories about you guys on the fucking planes. On, on oh, the planes. Yeah. Planes, uh, this no, and that. No, I mean, not private play. I mean, the plane, the team plane. I know, team plane. Uh, yeah. Gambling, Hennessy. I heard y'all was turning the fuck up on it. It was. It was a private plane, so yeah, things happened. And uh, it got out of hand a couple of times. We had to stop it, but it did happen. You honest, that's the honest story, what you just said. But uh, we had fun, and we had the, myself, I didn't, I'm going to delete it. I wasn't going to let it get too, uh, too far out of hand. And uh, I make sure everybody was okay. Stuff might have happened, but as it happened, I went and dressed everyone one-on-one, -on -one, make sure, like, whatever happened, let it stay here. No, we won't talk about it, whatever happened. But, uh, yeah, we had fun. Um, and that's what, you know, I think a team is about, is having fun when it's time to have fun. Even Pat Riley did fun things for the team, took it to the movies, did this and that, invited over during the holiday. But, you know, he's a tough coach. Some guys couldn't take it. But my thing is, but you got to be mentally tough. That's why sometimes in New York, you got to be mentally tough to get through things. A lot of people ain't ready for New York. That's why a lot of players can't play good in New York. And that, that's why New York is going to have problems. Describe that, oh, because that's the biggest. Tell me, baby, what's up? Describe um, the pressure, even though it looked like you had no pressure, but the pressure... Or playing in, why they always say why is players scared to come play in New York? And even if they come to New York, they try to go to Brooklyn to stay a little bit under the radar and shit. Like what well, is it? What is that thing that people keep talking about? The well, well, Joe, I got two different reasons why. You can hear me, right? Yes. So I, I got it's a different than come to New York, go to Brooklyn. So players will come to New York. In my area, this and that. Okay, what happened in the guard made people change their mind about coming to New York to go to Brooklyn. Brooklyn more selling. New York, it's how you run your team. If it, it the bad in the top, players don't want something bad when they come to a situation and get worse. Players want something under control, understandable. So that's why players not coming to New York right now because I'm talking about media. I'm talking about. It's, yeah. a, it's a lot of it's a lot of stuff upstairs not right, and they know that. And then they see what happened to me, and not being arrogant and cocky, I'm like you. 
If somebody come to New York gonna talk to me, they can't they gonna have problems in New York. Because mm -hmm. I mean I I grew myself in New York around people that I'm comfortable with. I know what they stand for. So if you wanna be comfortable, you have to go to Brooklyn right now and two things get straightened out with me in New York. I'm just being real with you. Mm. So um Charles Barkley. Yeah. Was he the arch nemesis? Um, say that, but he just he he's he's like a he's like a bum. No, but I see him with MJ just as much as I see you. No, not in the last no, I know not I've seen him with him out of time. Not since two thousand. No, no, not since two thousand. All right, that's twenty years. So <laughs> hey, he hey since twenty two thousand, he ain't gained two hundred pounds and he's stressed out. So he can't get back. You know, my thing is, it's okay though. I mean, everybody got their own different friends. You know, you had friends with Ja Rule, 50 Cent, 30 million people. I mean, now, I understand it. But Barkley, he can't never get back in. No Barkley. matter what he do, he do jumping jack, push up, he can't get back in the family. He out. He crossed the line, he crossed three lines. And he got a ticket every, every line he crossed. So, we don't really want to talk about him, but he on TVNT and higher. But my thing with him, great player, but we understand, but we don't deal with him no more. He came from uh -huh. the Olympics, the golf tournament, the, the tournaments in, in the Bahamas we used to have. Yeah. Party. Yeah, he can't come. He, if he comes to the door, it's a ticket set. No, go to the next party. <laughs> uh oh, he can't come no more. Just stay he over can't there. Come. I'm feeling the same way. I uh -huh. mean, I'm, yo, we talk about this shit all the time. Yo, they can't come no more. I'm in the yeah. studio last night. They bring up somebody who used to fuck with us, and I'm like, yo, you know what? What's sad is I be seeing that person talk about how we used to be 20 years ago. So we're not even those people no more. Right. So. If he, if they really figured out what kind of life we live, twenty twenty two, right? They would kill themselves. Like it's like yo, like, like you mad at me for the two thousand? You that I didn't even live a life then, right? And you bring it. Oh, I used to do this with Joe. I used to do shit. We wasn't doing nothing compared to what we doing now. Now, right? Like you said, the day price. Ain't the day no, price. Yesterday's, yesterday's price ain't the day price. price. <laughs> well, no, Same thing with conversation. No, no, it ain't. So Charles Barkley is outside. The, the, he's out the, the, the yeah. he got yellow tape. So he he had found him some, no, some new friends, I guess, on TNT and uh, uh, Subway and uh, Safeway. And, yeah, he, he looking for, hey, he out there. Hey, he catching the train. He going through the mall. He looking for friends right now. <laughs> oh, my God. He can't smoke that cigar, play that golf. Nah. It. Hey, he started by playing golf. He get lessons. I mean, he just want to be in. Hey, it, hey, you know sometimes you get put in the group and you ride past the block that guy you live down? And somebody's like, hey, ain't that you? Just come over here. No, we don't turn down that block no more. We keep going. We don't turn down that block where he at no more. We keep going. <laughs> yeah, we don't. We don't. I, I feel the same way. Like, I feel like I'm a real, real loyal person. Right. I feel like you could cross me yeah. a bunch of times. Right? Yeah. But I feel like it's just too much. I got to turn the switch off. A lot of guys selling out for the money. When there's something that must be about the money, no, you got to be about yourself. Because my thing is, the consistency. That's why I, in this my book, I talk about consistency with my life, what I've done. I help people. I give back until the day. Never, you know what I'm saying? But I ain't going to sell out to get a coaching job and, and try to do something else. No, I got. I have to be real. I ain't going to be fake. Everybody's like, oh, oh, you should play the role. No, I, I play, I mean, thousands of basketball games, but I play the role. I suck up my game to win a championship. Now life is different. I got to go for it. I ain't no more holding back. I'm not going forward. 
Yeah, I do understand what you're saying. And we only get one life to live. And you ain't out here trying to pretend to be some other shit. It is what it is. And uh, I know plenty of nights. We had dinner with Herb Williams. Right. You know, uh, with Larry Johnson. Yeah. Is, is Larry Johnson still our, our friend? Uh, I mean, he's working downtown. But I think he's not working because he gets vaccinated. He had moved on. Uh, you know, I embraced Larry when he came to New York. And, you know, this and that. Larry was a quiet type guy. You know, he do things his way. Never mad. Nobody do things his way. But uh, I think he don't work no more down that place on 34th Street. <laughs> Yo, you know what's crazy, Oak, man, is that, uh, you know, so many times, so many uh, – so many good times I could think about with us. You know, Tyrone Hill, you brought him up earlier. I remember he got scared to fly. I used to be scared to fly, too. Right. He used to drive instead of taking the plane when he played in Cleveland, right? So he used to drive instead of taking the plane, and the team said, listen, you either going to fly right. or you can't play no more. Right. You remember that shit? Uh, I didn't know that, but uh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't know that. Wow, that's a new one on me. But uh, I mean, me it's, it's hard not to. I mean, I think only one guy in sports didn't fly was John Madden with the Oakland Raiders. He was, <laughs> yeah, he really yeah, didn't yeah. fly. He had well, you know, for a little time. They had a scary flight, and Tyrone Hill. Yeah. He was. He didn't want to fly no more. He was driving, and then they was like, "Yo, look." He's either going to fly or, That's or it. it goes down. Who, yeah. what, name me some players that you got a lot of respect for to play. Is it Reggie Miller? Is it like, who do you who do you think were like really great, great, great? I mean, for, besides Mike, you know, besides, I think Reggie Miller, what, how he played, what he did on, on a regular days in the game, come off the picks and his craft. Basically, what Steph and how Steph played moving without the ball. Um, I mean, I just love to play against the Davis guys. Uh, a King Lodge one. I mean, you know, I always thought, I, the big guy. My thing is, you know, Carl Malone. Even I like, I didn't get a lot of calls and stuff playing with him. I was like, I had to be careful how I play when I played against him. But I always wanted to play with the best of him. I played against Shaq. You know, I, I like to bang Shaq. Shaq was bigger than me this night. Uh, he was powerful, but you know I knew how to get into him to slow him down. Uh, you know I just I just enjoy playing the game. I lo love playing at high intensity. I like the fans who come to see me play. And make sure I try to make sure every night on the court I play with a high level. Didn't matter who I was playing. Then that's one thing I like about basketball because you can be checking anybody at three, four, and five, but still you got to show you were smart. He knew how to play against whoever on the court. Man, uh, yeah, I respect Reggie Miller a whole lot. I think he had about at least three to four more years. When he retired, he still could have went for three, four more years. Um, he pretty much was the prototype, the, the blueprint for Steph and Ray Allen coming across the curl. Right. And, you know, I never talked to Re Reggie Miller for like years, like I used to go to parties to see him. I hated him for years. Yeah. One year, I'm walking right here in Newark Airport, and I'm walking. I got no choice. We just bump into each other, and Reggie pulls out his hand and says, "Yo, Joe, man, it's over. It was 15 years ago, 10. Like you can say hi, man. I'm a fan." So I said, "What's up to him?" And that night, he was on TV calling the game in Houston, and he shouted me out. I was like, "Yo." Me and Fat Joe made peace tonight. You know this. Yeah. You know that guy destroyed our. You know Reggie Miller was no, enemy number one in the garden. Yeah, I mean the garden. Hey, he hunted a couple of times. Uh, he showed. He stopped him for getting to the finals maybe one time, but he was he was a competitor. You know, he had some swag. See, a guy like that he had swag. He was controversial, but he came out to play ball, and he showed the fans that. His game traveled. And no matter where he was at, he was going to let you know he's in the house. So I get ready to do a lot of props. But, uh, you know, everybody's like, wow, you're giving him props. I mean, like, 
Hey, he showed up. He showed yeah, up yeah. and tried to show out. Every time you seen him, he was like that. You know, Isaiah Thomas. What, what what's the deal with Isaiah? Did, did, did you feel like he was one of the greatest of all time? What he was like? Isaiah back in the era, he was a top five player. Uh he talk about it a lot these days. He, they didn't put him on his green team. Uh, I don't know why, but I know his coach didn't want him. And they tried to say, my man Mike had something to do with it. But Magic was his best friend. Uh, he's still talking about it to this day, but he got to get over it. I mean, he wasn't over it. That, that, that was 20-some years ago. They played the game. He said it. He's like a guy here protesting. He's still trying to wonder why he was on the dream team. Wonder why he wasn't this and that. You gotta look at yourself sooner or later. If that mirror cracked, that means you was a problem. Yeah, listen. And so you don't so that you don't believe it was no truth to him being blocked out of the, the dream team. I mean, hey, I, I got bucked out three or four all star games. I didn't blame mm -hmm. nobody. So it is what it is. I know I had good numbers. I think Draymond made it this year. He got eight points, seven rebounds, six assists. I have 14 and 15. I mean, I wouldn't McHale or Bark or Cup alone, but it's what I have to do with my team win. See, back then, it was all into numbers and, you know. Okay. Boston. Or I know basketball, I was like a fan, but not as much as I know basketball now. And so one thing I did know about that era was that Stockton Malone was like fucking unstoppable. The yep. shit they were doing the pick and roll was like, you know, I watched every game. Everybody right. now yep. my IQ is way better. Uh tell me about that Stockton Malone. Why it felt like nobody could stop that shit right there. Like Well, I think on the West Coast is more up and down running. The East Coast, when they came easy, it was a East Coast had better a defensive strategy in the West Coast. West Coast didn't care. You know, they get the ball and go back at you. But the, on, on the East Coast, more, we're going to trap it. Are we going to rotate? I know we had the same. Are we going to blitz it and rotate to the come along, da da this and that. Thing is, stop the run out. But, you know, they was, hey, it's one, two punch. I mean, you know, um, he carried, uh, Stockton carried Malone, and it was like, Malone carried Stockton. So that's why they, like uh, Laverne and Shirley, one, one of the best pick and roll team ever played basketball. Yeah, they were, man. And 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 uh, what I'm saying is, after knowing the game for so many years, coaching being a mega fan, I understand the game crazy now. Right. But at that time, I was just like, I guess you would call a fan. And one thing I knew was them motherfuckers. <laughs> they were doing the same shit over. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Oh. Something that got me the most frustrated coaching, and it happened the other night. I was I was at the Nick game against Memphis. Right. I hate when the motherfucker get away with the same play twenty five times in a row. Like I hate the shit. Like you can't figure out that that guy's gonna shoot from there. Right. You, like, the guy hit six threes. You don't think he's gonna hit a seven? Right. Like, yeah. I think now it's more. It's hard to teach. Principle of the game, guys, strength and weakness, and we all get a scout report on every player on the team. So if you're a two guard, you learn the two guard. You're three, you got to run two and three. But most of the time, when you're playing, you should know what the guy's strength and weakness is. My thing, it's like playing against Stephen Curry, Stephen Curry and Clay. I'm running them off the three, don't matter what. I'm running them off. I'm over playing to make them go to the basket because. They the best three point duel ever play basketball, but some guys just don't get in. Coaches, right? Coaches cannot get on guys no more because they get down. They, you know, they get into their mold. Oh, the coach picking on me, this and that. But it's it's hard to coach the game now. I know what you're saying, but yo, you want to know what's crazy? It's even crazy. You know the Instagram. I don't know if you saw that Instagram of Memphis because I was the other day at the Nick game, right? The, the Instagram comedy, like, yo, Fat Joe's taking the L. They're, yo, this shit is crazy. Even the fucking teams are clowning, like, people in the fans. Like, they, they was on their shit, like, yo, Fat Joe's a loser. 
him and the I, I was like, oh my God, they threw two L's on me. Like, it, even if, you can't even be a fan no more than the other team is just the fan. It's the. Yeah. Hey, it's it's, the, hey. well, you know, I ain't been to a game down there in a while, but it's, and when I do go. Who are the toughest fans in the huh? NBA when you went up in there that you just felt like, man, this city, these guys are crazy? Yeah, but. Hey, the fans is hey, the fans want to see a winning team when you come out of you know when you go to a game. The fans want to see the home team win, but the home team sometimes just ain't good enough. And I think Memphis is a team that's on the rise. John Morant. And they had this dude. Let me tell you something. First time in my life, and trust me, I coached at the Rucker. Right, I know. Nine years, so I know it. My wife came one game. Right. And said, "I'm never coming back." She didn't understand how we ain't beat up the fans because they like, fuck you, fuck Terrence Court. Oh, yeah. Basketball talk. Basketball yeah. talk is shit talk. You listen, basketball talk is different than you walking down the street. Shout out to old Parrish on the check-in. Uh, basketball, you know, you in the street, somebody dish and you punch him in the face. Right. You at basketball, he's shit talking. She came yeah. one time, why you got all these guys with you, let these guys talk shit. I said, you don't understand. This is basketball talk. Like, like this is what it is, right? And um, yeah. and so all that never got me mad. The other night I'm watching the Memphis win. And every time the guy shoots a three, there was a guy courtside. He must have been one of their brothers. He kept getting up going like this. I wanted to. Oh, the, that's guy. the Carmella. That's the Carmella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the Memphis, the Memphis, like one of their brothers, the best friends, he bought a courtside ticket. It's, it's, it's New oh, York. Okay. Right? Every three-point shot they shot, he would get up and go. And some shit like that. I was like, yo, I want to get this guy. Like, yeah. like, he had me fucking mad furious. Yeah, I, I, I feel you. Because if that would happen in Philadelphia, after he did the second time, he would have been on his back or something. <laughs> I think New York fans, a little more passes, but, hey, I mean... It's a different ball game because I think that, um, like you said, back in the days, you know, you got to hit a bucket, you go down court. You ain't, they celebrate a lot. The team celebrate a lot. So the fans start to think they can celebrate because they with the team. You know what I mean, and I think that uh, sooner or later, something crazy is going to happen over the top. Like you said, you got really your mind, you really got like, wow, you got, you got riled up. And like this is New York. This, you know, sit down, enjoy the game. You know, but when, like people's over, it's over the top. I think they think it's good for the league, but I think it's bad for the league because something's gonna happen one day. Because these guys, all of the guys face doing this and that. No, I don't know what they they, they figure they can get away with doing stuff to other t other guys on the court. It's just it's crazy to me. You're on your team, but all that extra disrespect. Ah, uh, said that was John Moran's fault. No, no, it wasn't John Moran's fault. I seen him; he was doing it too, but that's his fault. <laughs> and his father looked like Usher, right? He <laughs> get away with father fly. John Moran is the truth. It was another dusty guy. I don't know how the fuck he caught that ticket courtside. That motherfucker getting me mad. Father, he had a red shirt on, nothing. He kept going. Every time they, I was like, "Oh my god, I want to get this." <laughs> Rich was like, yo, 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 I said, yo, I want to get this guy, man. I just want to fucking get this guy. Like, he was on my fucking nerves. Yeah. But uh, I get it. They're the fans. They get to do what they got to do. Um, Yo, the book is called Last Enforcer. Uh, where could they get the book at? Uh, Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Everywhere, Joe. I mean, if you just go on Google, come up. The book is hot. I mean, it's something, it's it's hey, this book is something when you read it, it can reflect you through your life. Like, wow. I know he, it, this book will tell you about my life and then think about your life. And uh, it's just a stirs. And over the years, I've been doing podcasts, doing this and stuff. I'm putting all this stuff in the book. I'm letting people know, hey, it's for real. They, they probably know what I'm doing now. I've been doing, giving back to a lot of charity. Everything is in this book. This book is a book that you can really get something out of it. I'm telling you. It's a hot book. You got to go get it. The last enforcer. And I miss my man Mace. <laughs>
Yeah, Mason was the man, bro. And let me tell you something. I'll tell you something, Chuck. Uh, I don't want to re-bring it up, but one time I fucked up. They asked me on ESPN about this song Biggie did. I don't know if you ever heard yeah. about it. Right? And so yeah, yeah, I heard about it. About, and I said some shit, but that's, let me tell you something. Oh, that's the only time in my life that I ever took talk back. It's the only time. Even if I put my foot in my mouth, even if I, I never, I put, I took the talk back because I thought everybody knew the story and and then everybody was like, oh, breaking news, Fat Joe. And then I have so much love and so much respect for Anthony Macy right. and his family that I said, I take it back. Like, right. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I'm stupid. This, you know, because it's I okay. never want somebody to think I ever disrespect Ed Macy. Right. You know, he was like somebody I look up to, a big brother. I love him to death. But right. uh, we love him, man. We love you. Oh, I see you okay. soon. Come to New I York, go up to Jimmy's, eat some good shit. I'll be in town. I'm going to come up to the spot in Harlem next Wednesday, okay? All right. And I'm going to be, um, hit me up. Oh, I'm, I'm definitely going to see you in Cleveland. Hey, tell the people, I'm doing Oakland All-Star Weekend in Cleveland. I got all kind of stuff going on. You got to come out, show me love. My foundation, my first big event for my foundation is in Cleveland, All-Star Weekend. Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday, Oakland Foundation is kicking it off. My brother, we love you, man. We don't Thanks, just bro. worship you, brother. Stay strong. The book is called The Last Enforcer. The yeah. one and only, ladies and gentlemen, Charles Oakley. Thank you, Joe. Thanks for being a real person, Joe. Thank you. Always, bro. I love you, brother. Thank you. Always. And ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I don't know where you're from, but this is a you don't know who I know moment. <laughs> you, you don't know who I know. This is Charles Oakley, the man, not the myth, the man, you know, I look up to, uh, took the Knicks all the way there, all the way there. Shout out to Road Parish. Uh, man, the Oakster. So the Oakster got a book out. I'm sure it's phenomenal. I'm sure it's going to be the bestseller. I know uh, Michael Jordan did the forward on it. Whatever that means. I don't really read books like that, so I'm going to have to find the audio version. You're going to have to buy it on my phone about this. so I can listen to it when I'm on the, on the plane and all that because I'm more of a verbal person. Doesn't mean I'm dumb. It's just I lose focus. Shout out the whole thing. I lose focus when I read books. Don't know why. No, no, no. For real. I tried reading books. My man... This locked up in jail. He uh, he, 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 he sent me a book to read. It was so incredible, but I, I, I don't know. I lose focus. Like it's like when I read the Bible too. Like I can read the Bible, but at a certain point, I'm just like lost. And so I like the verbal, the uh, audio the audio book. I did the Will Smith audio. Yeah, that was too nice guy ish. No, I, I ain't gonna lie to you. Will's a nice guy. <laughs> no, Will, 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 that's a nice guy and shit. Uh, let me see my man, because he, he won in. Yo, yeah. Dice Peso don't yeah, stop. I see, I see. Yo, Dice, you got to stop. <laughs> Up and coming rapper from the Bronx. Yo, Dice, you got to stop, man. Yo, <laughs> Dice, you want in, man. Yo. Yo, Dice, BX is on. I did the first. You did. You killed that, too. You know, my killed brother, that. you kill everything. You know, I'm kind of nice, Dice. You killed that. I know that. You know, I know the history. And I don't fall into that. I'm old shit or whatever or whatever. My flows is new. Yeah. So, I, I, you know, I hit every chamber. I'm, I'm, I'm still about it. Uh-oh. Little like Dice. Yo, Dice. You hear me? And so, listen, now, yeah, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. you can start with getting me one of them hats for my verse on your song. That's what you can do. Nah, that I got same you. color. <laughs> Man, got they got you. a Montclair. I was at the Montclair today. They, they got a Palm Angel Montclair collab with that color. 
Man, they had my size, man. Hey, yo. Yes, I'll be yo. there tomorrow. Hey, yo. It wasn't. <laughs> yeah, guys, you know, fat guys. Let me tell you about fat guys. Uh, I won't buy something if I can't close it. That's a but fact. Guys, <laughs> buy some shit that won't close. But I see Rick Ross wear shit that you know don't close. Like when you see this shit, you be like, it's fly as hell, boss, but that shit don't close. Uh, so I went to Day to Montclair. They got the ill collab, the genius stuff. Well, yeah. What is it? The one with the Paul Major? Paul Major. Fire. But they had a five. I needed seven. Need a seven. Yeah, you both need seven. <laughs> right, guys? Yeah. Man, tell us what it's like, man. You've been grinding. Is you fuck? Is you signing the gym? Jim is on here. Yeah, of course. I'm very game. Jim jumped on this bitch. Hey, uh, so are you signing the Jim Jones? Doing this? Yeah. Every That's time a... I talk somebody, yo, I just did a song with Dice. They be like, yeah, Jim's guy. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the big bro. That's that's, that's yeah, hell yeah. Bird game. Bird game. Yeah, bird game. Yeah. And so you know, I know your pops and I know your uncle. That's a fact. You know, I went out of town with your uncle for the first time ever. Oh, what? The whitest guy on the strip. <laughs> Police threw me on the wall like 30 times in Virginia. I had to come back. I had to say, yo, B, just give me the shit I spent on this, man. When, come, when I see you in New York, because he was coming through every other week with new wits. Yeah. Like, yo, take me out of town, B. And he took me out of town and... um. It wasn't a good experience for me. I couldn't get it off. Nah, I I, mean, I heard the stories, man. You heard? I seen it too. <laughs> so, they don't. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Nice. Man, I, it's official, man. I can't believe I made it. I can't believe I got a song with you. It's like having a song with you is like a nigga in Brooklyn doing a song with Jay Z. You know what I mean? So I appreciate that. Man, that's a huge compliment because I feel like I feel like you know, I won championship tonight. Man, you know how many calls I got? You heard? Yeah. You know, you cloth, right? Yeah. So, so the people understand, so that every, for every nigga in the Bronx don't hit me up for a verse, it's not going to happen, right? Yeah. What happened is, you come from a cloth. I grew up with your father. Yeah. Fly dude. I grew up with your uncle. You ain't even know that, right? Yeah. Then you fucking yeah. with him, and you got Trini, Trini with you. Yeah. That, that's, that, you know, that's my little brother. It grew up with me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? In my building, in my yeah. projects. Yeah. And so uh, you know, we raised him. And so when he come to me and he like, yo, crap, I need it. The the least I can do is show respect. No, that's a fact. Bro, I actually felt fake. Cause you asked me about three weeks ago. I was like, yo, man, I got to do this. Cause I, I felt fake. Like I yeah. was like, yo. I'm not telling you. Man, you know what? The other day when I did the fundraiser at Hot 97, uh, Doug came through. And I, when I came outside, he was like, yo, man, just tell me you ain't doing it. I said, yo, I, <laughs> I said, yo, I wrote the verse. It was in my fucking phone. Yeah. I, I just ain't get to the studio. You know, I've been lazy towards the rap shit. I've been doing the media. You know, I got I got like two, three TV shows coming out this year. No, I see you, I see you. I am, I'm not exaggerating. I got real TV shows coming. So I've been yeah. working on all type of media shit, investing this, that, where, of course, I'm a rapper at heart. Uh -huh. but I, time to go in there. Shout out Arsonist, the heat maker. I went to his studio and, 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 and put, I did yours and I did the Bing Bong remix. No, I see. I see. I see. I see. Yeah, I appreciate you taking that too. So, you know what I'm saying? He asked for the remix. Another guy thought he thought I was full of shit. Because yeah. you, know, you meet rappers, they act like they fuck with you. you. You try to connect with them. It happened to me. It happens to everybody. And they yeah. full of shit. Nah, that's a fact. You know what I mean? I, I, I mentioned that a couple of times. You kept your word, though. Oh, you know man, what I mean? I knew I was keeping my word. Like, yeah. let me tell you something, man. My word is bomb. The ghetto yeah. dog crack. Crack him. We from Godsville, man. When we say, and you, we, and you don't hear Joey crack shit on that verse. That verse is crazy. Yeah, I gotta get this. <laughs> you know, music is entertainment. I don't know if you know the, the, these police been using people's words against them, like hip hop songs against them. And the yeah. brother Bronx uh, wrote a law. He's trying to put in law so that.
these people can't use your lyrics against you because it's all entertainment. It's a yeah. fact, you know, I can't rap no more if I'm going to be PG-13 and do it Will Smith and all. I'm just not going to do it no more. That's you know what I'm saying? So when I come on that set, Joe Crack, you've been tapping into. Like, he going to give you that raw talk, that 40 cal with the drum, the dick, <laughs> all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Everybody yeah. know I'm like Mother Mother Teresa these days, increasing the peace, talking. But when I get on a song, I'm gonna talk my shit. It's entertaining. Nah, yeah, you ain't you ain't crazy. I'm like, oh, you talking about? You started off going crazy. I, I can't, can't wait. Cause I can't do it. You know what's crazy is, uh, Nas. Uh, I forget what album. I think it was one of the albums I put out. I seen Nas at Pristine. And Nas was like, yo, man, I was fired. He said, but I really wanted to hear it because I wanted to know how was you going to talk on it. And and he's like, the first line, he was like, some shit about, yo, I'm cutting the brick up. He's like, oh, same old Joe. Like, yeah. Yeah. you know what I'm saying? They think when you get older, you got to talk a certain way. That's you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. You know, I, I, I deal with ignorant rap. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, lean back. I don't give a fuck about the faults of his actions. You from the Bronx. Bronx. Shit you, happens. This is the whole world, and this is ice. Happy uh. meal for the charm, nigga. This is life. Like, yeah. I, I, you know, that's when Fat Joe's in his bag. If you really know Fat Joe, it's ignorant shit. And you, and you, and you telling the truth. You know what well, I mean? I'm telling the truth. I told him I, on that bing bong. Yeah. Bing bong, I hit him with the, what I said. I said, Four million on the watch, that's a lot of dancing. 20,000 square feet, that's a lot of mansion. When it, you know, I'm talk, I gotta, you know, we gotta talk that shit. You that's know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can't I, do it. Yeah, I just feel like it was it was real hard. It was real hard for Bronx rappers to get on. I mean, we just I mean, we just we just breaking that door in now. You know what I mean? You know, I've been hard for that, especially what you doing. You trying to do the real rap, the bars. The swag, you know, uh, other brothers is winning, but they, you know, I be confused sometimes. And yeah. I, this the youth, not what I'm into. Yeah. I never disrespect the youth. I never say nothing bad about it, but I'm not going to lie. Either I'm getting old or some of the shit got me confused. <laughs> no, no, I'm telling you, I heard a love song the other day with the nigga like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> 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 You know, <laughs> nah, I don't, I don't, I don't like, listen to that. I'm on the back now. I'm like, oh, <laughs> shit. like, is he beating this shit up? Or like, is he like, I'm trying to figure this shit out. He didn't give a burger to nothing on the song. Like, I'm like, yeah. damn. And so I was in the lane when shit going like this. I mean, I always stick to my lane. My lane been working lately, you know what I mean? So I try to stay away from that that rap you just talking about, you know what I mean? I grew up on it. I grew up on y'all, Trevor Squad, you know what I mean? Punt, you feel me? So my 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 dream a little different, you feel me? Yeah, and it's always so space. Like Jim, Jim going crazy in here. He definitely got some money invested in you. Jim, <laughs> Jim definitely he got nah, hold on. Yeah, like, yo, we me, me and Kyle were like Batman and Robin, man. Hey, y'all, let me tell you something. I told him one time, I said, yo, you know I used to fuck. I said, I used to fuck with his father, his uncle, his dad. He said, but where I said, yo, my, 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 my family used to fuck with Jim family, too. So, you know what I mean? With Ricky, Uncle Ricky. And so, you go, um, I remember where I seen you, not first, but I seen you. I was in COVID for a year and four months. Yeah. And Goes to a party for Chris and his wife. Yeah, in Miami. He was in Miami. You know what's crazy? Like, where did you? Well, yeah, look. Man, God, was... they can lie all they want. That literally was the first time I came out my house. Now, everybody said they was home that, for the COVID. You, you had told me that. You, you, no, you I was it up. Really in the home yeah. for the COVID. That's the first time I came out. So I got so saucy that night. I was having the best time. Oh, yeah. I the shit with you. That was the first place where uh, y'all planted the bug, and y'all was like, "Yo, Joe, man, you gotta fuck with me." This I see you, gonna, you. Let me let me tell you how it happened, though. 
I, I sat down, I'm like, damn, nigga, nigga Joe, because you was like, to yourself, I'm like, damn, I got to holler at Joe. I can't let tonight pass. It was Christy's birthday. But I gotta holler at Joe. I, I, this is what I wanted my whole life. Man, I gotta do. I gotta do a song for Joe. You can't be stomped in the Bronx if you don't got no. A lot of people can't say you got a record with Joe. You feel me? So my my, my bro Doe, I'm like, Yo, Doe, I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta Probably holler at him. They won't have a record with Joe. Yeah. Oh, like that. When Joe is about relationships, it's about respect. It ain't about money. It ain't about nothing. So they gotta, you know, they, yeah. it's, it's, the only way it's gonna happen. Is if I respect you as a person, that's why I did something for Nems. I knew Nems before he was fuck your life and all that. I love, yeah. I love him as a person. You know what I'm saying? And so before he right. up, I went on BET and Big Ticket did the basement. He said, "Yo, is there any rapper like Fat Joe?" And I said, "Yeah." He from Coney Island. They call him Nems. Yeah. Right. And and so I bigged him up way before all this shit. So now that he got his shit popping. And he like, yo, crack, I really need, he was persistent too. You know what I'm saying? I said, yo, I got you, bro. I got you. But, um, man, I'm happy for you. You got this one. You got yeah, Jim on the Jim is going crazy for you. Yeah, that's my uh, big bro, what, man. What's, what's your project and when you releasing this joint? Man, we're going to do this one big, man. Flex on my line already. He want that now. You heard? You feel me? But, um, I got the virtual pain dropping on the 18th. You feel me? And we got the gangster girl out right now, man. Shout out to Jim Jones. That's going crazy. Yo, we setting yo, trends yo, out here. That's what we doing. We setting yo, trends, yo. Let me tell you something, boy. When that first line came in, you wasn't you wasn't thinking it was coming like that. Nah, was, I'm like, damn. Box where my heart used to be. No Amari. Bitch crazy. off and around me when it, like you know, you heard. Yeah. I'm trying to skip on that. You've you seen that Jepsy go. That's a fact. That's a Trinity Ave. That's a Trinity Ave. Oh, you speak right no Mario. This quick coughing around me. <laughs> Woo! You had an army jacket on in the booth when you was yeah. you saying that. What? Apple sauce, pork chops, pissy elevators. Mm. I'm just trying to own stocks, one of the elevators. Mm. Like, you know, we just going crazy, but, you know, I'm proud for you, my brother. We're going to look out for your project. Yeah. Oh, I'm tuned in. And I appreciate you, big bro, for that stint. I need that. You heard? Oh, God bless you, man. Nothing but love. You deserve it. Peace. You're ready. All right. And so that's Dice Peso. And you don't know who I know. If you don't know, get used to it. Come from a legendary family in the Bronx. I used to be with. You pretty much could read around the lines back in the day. But we signed Jim Jones. He's with family, so he's with us. Now, that record... I think it's called South Bronx. And so, boogie down. Yeah, yeah, Tim Jones going ahead. Going crazy on him. Yo, Jimmy! <laughs> Fan life, bitch. And so, um, Cash App, much more than just sending money. The stocks. It's crypto. Go over there after this using the code uh, Fat Joe and get 15 free dollars. Tonight, Charles Oakley, the last enforcer. You know what it is, man. This is the big, 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 the unstoppable big, big show. And next week, I'm coming back with big money. We're giving away big money. Oh, work. Yeah, yeah. We are. Yeah. Cash App giving up a lot of money next week. That's what's up. You know what I'm saying? So they said, Joe, we want you to set it up so we can just give, I think it's a couple of hundred thousand away. Right here on this little fucking show right here. It's a beautiful thing. Yo, the fat Joe man. It's, it's, it's the gift that keep giving, huh? It's a beautiful thing. The gift that fucking keep giving. And yo, listen, y'all. Let your darkest moments bring your most clarity. If you go through something financially, relationship, health-wise, your so-called family and friends ain't there for you, they full of shit. Don't believe them. Okay? God has given you a lesson so you can get the doubters and the naysayers from around you. I seen the post our brother Jimmy put up today, uh, Jimmy's Cafe, yeah. um, and it said, yo, blood don't make you family. Loyalty, trust, and respect make you family. That's what God, is. God is the greatest. Look to God. God is the greatest. Uh, in good times and bad times, sometimes things happen. You know what I'm saying? We all go through stuff, man. We all got Family, you know, my father went today to get a little checkup. They put him to sleep. 
I was waiting for him to be up. I usually there, but I got to do the Wendy show, and there's a lot of things I can't move out for. So, but still and all, um, you wonder why these things happen, but you know, God, He's there with you, man. So trust in God. Yo, listen, be the biggest in the game. See you soon. Peace. This fucking man, on and off. Man.